Team USAW has finally announced the eight athletes that are going to be headed to Tokyo. And so I figured what I'd do here is go through those eight weightlifters who will be at the Olympics for Team USA, given that so many of you guys watching are actually from the USA. The demographic skews heavily over to that part of the world. And then talk a little bit about their best numbers and more so the journeys that they've each gone through to get here during the last what's really now been about 26 months of qualification period for this Olympic Games. Also, if things look a little bit weird, it's because I'm actually at the new Weightlifting House HQ on the top floor, and we haven't got a studio set up. So for the foreseeable future, I don't know quite how long, at least a few weeks, I'm probably going to be in different places around this premises, this HQ. Uh, but right now, I'm kind of liking this one. Okay, so the eight people who are going to the Olympics from Team USA, we have Jordan De La Cruz, Kate Nye, Matty Rogers, Sarah Robles. Those are the four from the women's side, of course. A country is only able to send as many as four men and four women if they qualify. Countries get fewer spots if either they don't qualify athletes, athlete qualifies by getting to the top eight in the world in each weight class, plus the next continental, so the next person who's in the highest spot in that continent. And then the only other way you get fewer people is if, of course, your country has too many drug pusts. So on the men's side, we have CJ Cummings, Harrison Maris, Wes Kitts, and Kane Wilkes. So let's go through these kind of one by one. Jordan De La Cruz, 49 kilo Jordan De La Cruz. Her best performance during this whole qualification period, she did most recently the 2020, well, 2021, but technically 2020 Pan Am champs. She went 89, 111. That's a 200 kilo total at 49 kilos in body weight, which gave her over a thousand Roby points. And that's actually the most Roby points she's got in a single competition, 1,046. Now, before this, she used to be a 55, and, and before that, even a 53. And the most we've seen her do in other weight categories, 116 in the clean and jerk. Again, she was much heavier there. 91 snatch, 207 in the total. That was at the Pan Am Champs back in 2017. And just to talk very briefly about how exceptional Jordan is, and in my opinion, she is the number one pick probably from the women's side to take a medal at this upcoming Olympics. I know a lot of you are thinking, Sarah Robles, she's world champion, she's an Olympic medalist. I get that, Jordan is just on fire, and her weight category will go through that. She's looking to be in a good situation. So the old 48 kilo records, a weight category that she never really competed in, 83 kilos in the snatch, 102.5 in the clean and jerk, that's 185 in the total. Now, Jordan, at just one kilos more in body weight, has snatched six kilos more, and she has clean and jerked eight and a half kilos more. And she's totaled 15 kilos more. So Jordan is absolutely ridiculous. So if you actually go through some of Jordan's performances, you can see she started off this competition at 55 during the qualifying period for those first two qualification periods, the, t the, the two of the three six-month periods. And then she dropped down to 49 kilos, and she's performed significantly better. She's lifted very much similar numbers, at least in the snatch. Clean jerk has dropped, as you'd expect from being someone in a lighter body weight, but even so, she's done much better. Also, apologies for the gust of winds. We desperately do need a studio set up here to minimize these sounds. Now, just very quickly, the reason that Jordan did this is she realized that she wasn't going to be as competitive in the 55 kilo category and so really the only way for her to qualify for the olympics was to drop down all the way to the 49 kilo category where she would be ranked higher than Alyssa ritchie and morgan king and a couple of other of the american 49s and it turns out she's amazing in that category and she deserves to be in that category or really she was born to be in that category i ought to say and she took those roby points down and has really excelled Okay, so let's take a look at this 49 kilo category. Now, at first glances, we can see that Jordan De La Cruz is down in sixth position here. However, there are a few things we need to, uh, to remember. The first is that North Korea aren't sending anyone, so we can remove Ri song -gum. The next thing you need to remember is that China can only send one athlete per weight class, so we're going to remove most likely Jiang Hui Hua and also Rong Zhang. So that's going to leave the Snatch World record holder Hu Zi Hui to go to the Olympics for the Chinese spot. Behind her with the next highest total, and we can actually rank these by best total or by qualification points. But if we just do this by best total, as we have done here, we can see that Jordan De La Cruz probably sits in about third place. Next, we have Kate Nye. Now, Kate Nye, of course, 2019 world champion. She's also the 2019 junior world champion. She's also the 2019 
IWF Female Weightlifter of the Year. She has a best competition performance from that World Championships, 112, 136, 248. She hit a 137 kilo American record shortly after as well. And she did that as a 71 kilo weightlifter. The most rugby points she's had in any individual competition is 900. And 28. Now, if we look at the Roby points here for the 76 kilo category, right now, straight away, things look very good for Kate, just based on the order that these athletes are in. But the problem is this is sorted for Roby points, and Kate and I received a lot of Roby points in the lighter, non-Olympic, slightly less competitive weight category, and has now moved up. So though she's carried those impressive Roby points up, she's now going up against heavier, stronger weightlifters. So right now she sits in fourth, and of course if we remove Rim Jong Sim, she moves up to third, and if we remove one of the Chinese weightlifters, presumably Wang Ziyu, she moves up to second. But if we do it based on total, suddenly we can see that Kate Knight is down in tenth. So that doesn't mean that she's going to place tenth, she has more kilos in body weight to gain, and so hopefully she'll end up hitting even more in the lift, something maybe closer to 115 in the snatch and something potentially over 140 in the clean and jerk, which if we look for something more like a 255, that might put her in and around sixth place. And then when we equate for removing a couple of the heavier weightlifters, and then when we equate for removing one of the Chinese weightlifters, one of the North Korean weightlifters, and then maybe even Lady Celeste, because Colombia may not be present at the Olympics, suddenly there is a chance for Kate Nye to medal. Matty Rogers moving up to 87 kilos in body weight. Now, I know a lot of you are shocked I have spoken about the fact that she's going to do this for at least a year at this point. Uh, so I assume most of you are aware of this, but I did see a few people being quite surprised that she was up in this category. What she's done is she's not going to be able to qualify in the 76 kilo category because Kate Nye has more Roby points in individual meets and also she's had more opportunity for gold tier events having been a junior during part of the qualification process. So Matty has competed, taken her points up to this heavier weight class and will be sat there now. She is, of course, two-time world silver medalist in the total. She's a four-time Pan American Championship silver medalist in the total. She did recently win Pan Ams, uh, 111-140, a 251 total. It's a Pan American record as well in the snatch at 111. And the thing for Matty is she was so close to going to the Olympics last year. I think she had the highest Sinclair from the women's side, but that's just not how Team USA ranked it, which seemed very harsh. 832 Roby points is her best from an individual competition. So if we look at this 87 kilo category, once again, we can see a similar thing. Matty Rogers sits in second behind Wang Zhu Yu, who also qualifies in the slightly lower weight category. But the problem is when we equate for, when we just do it based on total, we realize that she doesn't get it quite so high. Uh, in 21st, no, this is actually not fair because I think that's showing her highest total from this 87 kilo weight category. She's totaled higher in lower categories if we take a look. Like the 251, I just mentioned you did 251. So there we are, 251. This was taking into account this performance here from the Rogue Arnold Sports Fest. As we can see, she competed in the 71 kilo category, moved up to 76, dropped down to 71, up to 81, and then finally 87. And so if once again we equate for, we just rank by total rather than Roby points, but we acknowledge her 251, suddenly we can see that Matty Rogers would be in the top 10 when we remove one, two Chinese weightlifters, three Chinese weightlifters, and a North Korean, suddenly she's going to be moving up into a much better situation. And then finally, from the women's side, we have Sarah Robles. Now, the most Roby points that Sarah Robles has got, not named after Robles, Roby points are different, uh, is 793 in an individual goal tier competition. She has records of 128, 162. The 162 is an, an all-time American record, the heaviest lift that any American woman has ever hit. 290 total, also an American record. That was in 2018, where she became the 2018 world champion. She is, of course, also the 2016 Olympic bronze medalist, 126, 160. That's a 286 total. Now, if we look at the rankings, I actually think that Sarah is in an extremely strong position to get a medal. Whether that's going to be bronze, maybe even silver, I don't know. Right now, we have Lee Wen Wen with the most Roby points and also the heaviest total. We can rule out Tatiana Kasharina because she's not going to be there. Qualifying for Russia ain't easy. We can also remove Meng Su Ping and Zhu Xiao Man from China, also as well as Kim Kuk Kiang because the North Koreans aren't going. So once we remove these people in fifth, fourth, third, and second, Sarah Robles suddenly moves up 
to second in terms of Roby points. And if we rank by total as well, we can see that Sarah maintains that position in sixth, which is essentially second when to remove the others. So other than people like Anastasia Lensenko, who didn't compete that well at Europeans, but supposedly had COVID, and so that was why she wasn't feeling that strong. And then others like Laurel Hubbard, who, of course, uh, very controversial right now, who may end up lifting quite a lot. We don't know. But other than maybe those two, I think that Sarah is actually the most likely to get a total. I take to get a medal. I take back what I said earlier about Jordan. Jordan's Jordan's second. And very quickly, let's just take a look at the career. No, in fact, the qualification period career for Sarah Robles. 290. She kicked off very strong at those 2018 World Champs, where of course she won. 279, 285, 284, 280, 280. Extremely consistent. I think that 285 was the competition where she came out to hit something heavier in the clean and jerk, but just didn't have it in her to recover in such a short time period. But she is in an extremely strong situation, despite having fewer Roby points or perhaps less in an individual competition than the other females chosen for Team USA. Okay, let's go over to the men's side now. Okay, so we're going to kick things off with CJ coming. CJ is just, you know, I have been talking about CJ since I started Weightlifting House just over four years ago. And me and my friends who lived in the original Weightlifting House before Weightlifting House became this company would also speak about CJ as just being one of the future real top weightlifters of the sport. And he's done an incredible job over the last five, six, seven, eight years, nine years. He's 21 now. He was, he was 11, 10 years he's been around now, basically. Now, what's amazing about CJ is he's actually the 12th highest ranked weightlifter in the world on the men's side. If we go here and we look at the full rankings, Lash Tilakadze, 5,300, Chi Zhiyong, 5,000. They sit in one and two. Chen Li Jun, part of the reason why he's going to be one of my picks for Team China, I'll do a my, my picks for Team China video at some point, is number three. And then we come all the way down, China, 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 a couple of Armenians, Meza, of course, and then there we have him, CJ Cummings, 4,185 points, Absolutely incredible. Above people like Akbar Jiraev, Echo Yuli Iran, Feng Lu Dong, Huang Wen Hao, Andreev Bozidar. It's just absolutely staggering how well he's done. He has best lifts in this weight category of 155, 193, 347 in the total. Those are all American records. He's a four time junior world champion, he's a two time Pan American champion, and he has three times hit Roby points over 1,000, his highest ever being. 1089 his lowest total roby points in a single meet is 943 that's how ridiculous he is back when he was a 69 actually he held the american records also at 144 185 324 so he has pushed those american records up being four kilos heavy of course so perhaps i shouldn't say pushing them up he has set records in the 73 kilo category that are up 11 kilos in the snatch eight kilos in the clean and jerk and 23 kilos in the total which is Amazing. In terms of CJ's likelihood to medal, we can see she's young is just by far and away running away with this one as long as he doesn't bomb, which you just you just never know with she. Well, that's not true. She doesn't really bomb. He has bombed before, but very rarely. But you know, he, he can be still somewhat quite inconsistent on the clean and jerk. But of course Chen Li Jun is only here because he's qualified technically as a seventy three, but really he's a sixty seven. And then suddenly there we are, CJ Cummings above athletes like Andrea Bozidar. Uh, Julio uh, Miora and really when you go down the list there are just a lot of Chinese weightlifters if we do it instead of by Roby points and we rank by total let's just very quickly take a look CJ sits in fifth now we're going to be able to remove Yuan Cheng Fei from China because he is the second tier Chinese weightlifter which is very harsh then we have Julio Miora who CJ literally just beat less than a month ago we have Wan Zhong Sik who is an amazing weightlifter but just hasn't been able to show the kind of shape he showed back in 2018 when he was a mid 190s clean and jerker. Danny is Mayalov, but Danny is not clean and jerking over 190 really anytime soon. The only person who really scares me below CJ here is Andreev Bozidar. He didn't do as well at Europeans, he didn't defend his title, but he moves so well and if he's in shape, he could be the person who who topples CJ. So I think there's going to be CJ and then there's going to be a battle for second and third between Julio Moura, CJ Cummings, and of course, Andreev Bozidar. So if we look at CJ's performances, again, you can just see how incredibly consistent he's been and also just how he has attempted to put a kilo on his snatch every single qualification period. 
153, 154, 155, every single qualification period, 191, 187, 93, 92. 83 was a little bit down at the World Champs, but back up 88, 87. All of his totals between 333 and 347. He's done very well. And again, look at these. Three over 1,000, three over 900. His lowest one, four over 900. His lowest one here at 947. That was pretty recent. So CJ is in great shape and is very consistent. Over now to the 81 kilo category. Good old Harrison Maris. Almost as much of a weightlifting prodigy, I suppose, as CJ was when we first heard about CJ. Harrison was doing the same kind of thing, winning junior or, or youth world championships. Now, Harrison's best Roby points in a single meet, a gold tier meet, 994. He did 157, 200, 357 kilos in the total. I think that was the 2018 world champs. We'll take a look at a minute at his journey through this qualification process. Now, the best that Harrison has done as an 81 kilo weightlifter, 158 in the snatch, 200 in the clean and jerk, and then that 357 total because he didn't put those two lifts together on the same day. 2017 world bronze medalist as a 77 before the change in weight categories. He did 193 for an American record in the clean and jerk. Could never get that American record snatch. Um, Oscar Chaplin is just too much of a goat to do that. 348 American record though, to be fair. And let's take a look to see where Harrison actually sits in that category. So right now we can see that he is down in ninth. However, let's do some magic again. Shi Ziyong, not going to be there. Li Dayin, probably not going to be there in favor of Lu Jun, who will take that Chinese spot. Bozidar Andreev, not going to be there. He's a 73. Brian Rodelegas may not be there. Colombia's not probably, possibly, who knows, going to be at the Olympics. So we can remove Shi, Li, Andreev, Brian, and then suddenly, so that's four people, suddenly that means that Harrison moves up to fifth. Let's just run this by total. Harrison's dropped a little bit there, but the thing with Harrison is we all know that he's capable of more than he's really shown us. Like 60, 200, 60, 203 are numbers that I think he's capable of. I mean, he, he had a tug on 205 at one point. Let's just take a look at his performances because he has been a little bit less consistent than CJ. 357 at his peak, 335 at his depths. 2019 IWF Junior Worlds. Uh, 150, 190 most recently, which again was a bit of a drop. But who knows, his training may improve. Hopefully Spencer's doing some good things with him. So you never know. We may see something around the 363-ish total. If he does do that, let's take a look and see where that might put him. Let's once again rate for Roby points. So 363 would equal Regipe Regipov, who's currently in fifth. Let's remove one of them. That would put him in fourth. It's possible that he could meddle. It's unlikely, but it, it's not impossible. Next, we've got the big boy himself, Wes Kitts, friend of mine, wonderful guy, wonderful weightlifter. Very thrilled to see him qualify for this uh, Olympics. In fact, if, if people are interested, I have podcasts with Jordan De La Cruz, Kate Nye, Harrison, and Wes. So four of these eight, you can listen to many episodes. I've done multiple episodes with a lot of these guys. Wes Kitts, in terms of his best Roby points in a single meet, he has done 898 at a gold tier event. He's a 2019 Pan Am Games champion. He's a two-time Pan Am Championships champion. Uh, and he holds American records in the clean and jerk and total in the 109s. 223, 399. Uh, he also snatched 176, which he also did as a 105 for an American record also. So he's all very well and qualified, but does he stand a chance at a medal? Let's take a look. This is a tricky category. There are so many things that we don't yet know. Simon Martirosian, is he going to be going to prison for having hit and killed someone in a car? Was it his fault? We don't know. He may be there. He may not be there. Yang Zhe, probably not going to get taken by China, in fact. Almost certainly not. Drive Akbar will be there. Andre Romnau, Belarus only gets one person. So again, are they going to send Andre Romnau? Probably not. Dmitry Chumak, probably. Uh, Rodion Bochkov, no. Timur Naniev, no. Ali Hashemi, who knows? We don't know if Iran is going to send Ali. Arkadis Mikowski, yes. Artis Plesniak, yes. And then we're in and amongst the people who Wes, who is actually right now sat in 15th, can be. Wes can out-total those guys. So on a great day, if Simon gets... Well, I know that wouldn't be great. If Simon wasn't there, that's, that's a bad day, not a great day. But if Simon wasn't there, and on Wes's great day... 
And then Yang wasn't there, and Aromna wasn't there, and Botchkov and Naniev. You never know. We may, we may see West move up into the top five. It's possible. It's possible. I don't think this is a category in which West can medal. That's not for his lack of skill. Well, I suppose technically it is, but it's in many ways due to just how ridiculously impressive uh, this, this weight category actually is. Wes also has had a bit of an up and down. He's had some huge performances and some not so great. 399 and 390 to kick this qualification off. Then it has been slightly downhill from there. 388, 389, 368, 380. And then most recently, you know, he was in a little bit of pain. He just had a kid, which is, you know, that takes up a lot of effort. Um, not that he had the kid, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Um, so he, he, he ended a little bit lower, but certainly he's probably going to be able to come back. And he's, you know, I mean, he's going to snatch in the 70s and he's going to clean and over 210. It's just how close to 180 he's going to go and how far over 220 is he going to go. Can he get 400? 400 in the total would just be amazing. And I think he would be the lightest American weightlifter to ever total 400 and the eighth American weightlifter ever to total 400. And then finally, from Team USA, we have Kane the Dragon Wilkes. 20 years weightlifting, which is just ridiculous. I looked back and found out he took silver medal at the 2003 School Age Nationals. That's 18 years ago. That's insane. Uh, he's the eighth American to total over 400, so that would make Wes the ninth. He is the fifth American to clean and jerk over 500 pounds, 227 kilos. He's the three times Pan American champs and his individual best Roby point performance, 745. Now, let's be honest. This is a very tough category to total in indeed or to meddle in. Lash Talakadze will be untouched even from his openers because there's a very good chance that we may not even see Gormanassian, which is an absolute tragedy. Now, if we look here, Simon Martirossian ranks at number two, but he's a 109, so he's just ranking there because he has totaled as a 109 plus kilo weightlifter. That's also the same with Yang Zhe. That's also the same with Andrea Rom now. So we can move them. We can move Arkady's Mikowski. We can move all of these people. We can remove West Kits. It doesn't really matter, though. Unfortunately, Kane Wilkes down 23 and 23rd. Uh, when we equate for total now rather than Roby points, and we can see that Kane moves up from 23rd up to 21st. But still, he's just not really going to be someone who medals, and that's totally fine. He's in, once again, a tough category. When you're going up against Lasher, 485, someone who is pioneering the sport, it, it's okay to not medal. It's fine. Also, when you don't weigh 170 kilos, it's also fine to not lift as much as someone who does weigh 170 kilos. But anyway, that is Team USA. I'm going to do a Team China prediction. Once teams are announced, I'll do a little bit more of this style of analysis. Let me know if there's anything you need explaining, you want explaining, if there are videos you want me to react to. I'll be doing more videos for the Weightlifting House Patreon if you want to check out more of the kind of videos that I guess we do here. And we'll also try and do a little bit more sort of content around this place because we have a huge amount of space now, Weightlifting House HQ. The new bars are out, in fact, hold up. Right here, this is one of the new elite weightlifting bars that we have. This is actually a women's bar, as you can see from the end cap. It's got the slight yellow around it. These are absolutely insane. I mean, these, these really are the most gorgeous bars we've probably, well, they're certainly the most gorgeous bars we've ever sold. Um, thrilled with it. We've gone through such lengths to pull this off. Um, there's actually a patented, well, I'm not even gonna go into exactly how the end caps work but they are truly absurd. The aesthetics of this bar, the build quality of this bar, the sturdiness, the robustness um, are phenomenal. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this short, long analysis of Team USA, but hopefully it now makes sense to you all. I'll catch you all next time.